No comment. <laughs> but I do have one thing to say. Welcome back, everybody. Today is Friday of the third week of Advent. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Yes, this has been a long journey. Yeah. But we're so glad that you're still with us. <laughs> you had a couple of thoughts? Yes, I did have a couple of thoughts. Um, the first one is, if you have yet to get to confession during this um, penitential time of Advent, we really recommend that you go because in order to grow in our in our holiness, we need to have a sacramental life. And one of, one piece in that is to get to reconciliation. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say was that when we began this journey, we, Ken and I were kind of just thinking about it, like what, what should we ask of the people? And we thought, you know, it would be really great if everyone could pray a daily rosary. And I understand if you are not already in the daily habit of praying a daily rosary, that can seem incredibly daunting. Um, so we did make it easier in the sense that we have recordings of the rosary. So you can start there. I would say the preferred way you know, is to where you can do something quietly. Um, <clears throat> without our aids. Without our aids, you know, yeah. but I understand some people really are able to enter into deep prayer, even with the beautiful imagery that you've put together in those recordings. But if you, if you can do it on your own, that would be probably the best. We are going to continue on with St. Alphonsus's Advent sermons. And the very beginning catches my attention because he describes the event of the Mount of Transfiguration. Mm -hmm. So there Jesus is conversing with two of the Old Testament prophets. He's got Moses and Elijah. And the apostles are in the background. You know, they witness this. And I, But what does Jesus talk about with Moses and Elijah? Do they talk about the weather? <laughs> Do they talk about the apostles? Do they talk, you know, what was the details of the conversation? Well, scripture gives a little insight into it, not word for word, but the scripture says they talk about his decease. So it's his coming death. But St. Alphonsus makes this incredible insight and says the word decease that is used there, the Latin word is also excess. So what are they talking about? They're talking about an excess. An excess what? What do you mean? Well, St. Alphonsus gives an explanation. Yes, says St. Bonaventure. It is with reason the death of Jesus Christ was called an excess, for it was an excess of suffering and of love, so much so that it would be impossible to believe it if it had not already happened. It was truly an excess of love, at St. Augustine. For to this end, the Son of God wished to come on earth, to live a life so laborious, and to die a death so bitter, namely, that he might make known to man how much he loved him. I really do think this is beautiful. The conversation with Jesus and Moses and Elijah is just not about him dying, but they're talking about the excess of love that he's come to demonstrate to the world. And what a beautiful conversation that is, but also a, a beautiful reminder for us today because when we talk about an excess, mm -hmm. we're talking about something that goes beyond mm -hmm. what is necessary. And in one way, God's love goes beyond what is necessary. Now, why does God do such a thing? Because he wants to demonstrate how much he loves us. Mm -hmm. Because when you love someone, you don't seek to do the minimum. Imagine I go to Janelle, and some of you may have heard this analogy before. I go to Janelle and say, how much do I have to listen to you talk <laughs> in our relationship? You know, mm. How many gifts do I have to buy you to be on good terms? And when we're asking those questions, we're really asking this question. How little can I love you before I lose you? When we ask those type of questions, that's what we're really saying. What's the bare minimum I can get away with? Mm -hmm. Now, God doesn't seek to love us the least. He, he seeks to love us the, the most, best, most fitting way possible because that's what love does. Mm -hmm. Love seeks to do the maximum, not the minimum. Jesus Christ could have saved us, says Father Nirenberg, with one single drop of his blood. But it was his will to shed all his blood and to give his divine life that at the sight of so many sufferings and of his death, we might not content ourselves with an ordinary love, but be sweetly constrained to love with all our strength, a God so full of love towards us. 
You know, consider the passion. Jesus does much more than just offer one single solitary drop of blood. Think about each station of the cross. Mm -hmm. Each step on the way to Calvary mm -hmm. was an excess, demonstration of an excess of love. I mean, one drop was enough. Mm -hmm. But he goes beyond. I, this is, this, we need to remind ourselves of this continuously because God is just not this minimalistic type of lover, mm -hmm. but one who goes to the extreme lengths to gain our hearts. And I think if you really want to meditate upon the passion of Jesus, doing the St. Bridget prayers is a really great, um, great way to go through all that mm. he went through because um, Saint, it was revealed to St. Bridget through private revelation that um, just a lot of the details. And then also um, going through St. Alphonsus' sermons during Lent. Like I learned so much last year going through those. And it really goes into detail about the different sufferings that Jesus went now through there, and what Mary went through. Now there might be some people watching who are unaware of the St. Bridget prayers. Mm -hmm. You prayed these prayers every day for a year yes that's right so the devotion what is encouraged is that you pray these prayers there's 15 prayers that you pray every single day for an entire year and uh, it goes through the passion of jesus so if you'd like to learn more about them i'll link right up there uh, that was the very first devotional video that we've ever recorded and it's available for you today what a beautiful sight to see in religion, souls wholly given to God who live in the world as if out of the world, without any other thought than that of pleasing God. Let us set eternity before our eyes, and then we shall suffer everything in peace and joy. So when I read that quote, it reminded me of the story of St. Cecilia. I don't know if you know St. Cecilia, but she's an early martyr. She was a convert and then a martyr. It is written about her that when she was being martyred, she was actually singing during her martyrdom. And I feel like that we shall suffer everything in peace and joy when we give our lives to Christ. I think of many things in my life where I do not sing. <laughs> you grumble. And... I grumble. <laughs> Dig your heels in the ground. If, you know what? That's okay. This is part of the journey. This, this is <laughs> this is part of the journey. We got to get through it now because you can't go through it later. <laughs> so, all right. I'm going to stop. Guys, thanks for watching. You had anything else? No, that's okay. Uh, comment below. Share with us what stood out to you and why. Uh, the rosary link will be up there. And we'll see you tomorrow. God bless.